Hi, I'm Sarah Lawson from Sew Sweetness, and today I'm going to show you how to make my free pattern for this easy leather hobo bag. This is a great bag for beginners because it'll teach you how to use metal hardware, which is featured on the straps, and the lining of the bag also has a magnetic snap closure to keep all of your essentials safe. Both of these bags were made with fabrics from my shop. The blue bag is lovely cork fabric in ocean blue color, and this bag in the front is made with a faux leather in rose gold. You can find the pattern instructions and templates in the description below, so gather your supplies and let's get started. Okay, first you'll need to print out your pattern pieces. So with your pattern pieces, there was a two-page document with cutting instructions and fusing instructions for your interfacing. And there should be four pages of templates that you'll need to tape together. So for on page two of the templates, there are two small squares. One is a one inch square and one is a four centimeter square. You want to make sure to take your ruler and measure either of those squares to make sure that they measure to the correct size. If they don't, that means your pattern pieces did not print out correctly. When printing out the pattern pieces, you want to open the templates in Adobe Reader as opposed to a website browser. So you want to make sure if you don't have Adobe Reader, it's a free download. Go ahead and download that and reprint out your pattern pieces. And for the printer settings, you want to print out an actual size. Okay, so let's get these taped together. So for pages one and two, they're going to be taped where the, the small triangles are on the sides. And so I like to, to cut off one of the margins. So on page two, I'm going to go ahead and just cut out the left-hand side. Okay, and just go ahead and use some scotch tape and align the triangle and go ahead and, and tape that together. Okay, so to attach three and four because there's a margin over here, we're going to cut off the top margin for page three. And then that'll tape together at that top triangle right there. Lastly, for page four, we're going to cut off the top and the left side edge. Page four will line up on that triangle on the left hand side and also the triangle right at the top. Once you have everything taped together, go ahead and cut out all of the pattern pieces and you want to cut along the outer edge of the pattern piece. So for instance, for this main panel, we're just cutting along that outer edge. So go ahead and cut everything out. And when it's all cut out, they should look like, like this. Okay, so on page two of the printout, there are a list of pieces that you'll need to cut out from fabric as well as from interfacing. So I'd like to show you how to cut out your lining main panel. So I've got a piece of fabric left over that I have from my lining. I'm just going to fold that piece in half. And if you have a piece of fabric with an elaborate design in the center, you want to center that piece where the fold is. So I don't have an elaborate design for mine, but if I did, I would want it to be centered right on that fold. 
So here's my main panel pattern piece, and I'm just going to place it right on the fold. And we're going to cut around it. We're not going to cut through the fold. So I like to use a pattern weight or scissors are fine because they're heavy enough. My fabric's dark, so I'm using this Clover Chaco, but um, if you'd like, you can use a friction pen or, or an invisible fabric marker. Anything, anything that'll mark the fabric will be fine. So what I'm doing now is I'm just tracing around the outer edge of the fabric. Okay, and once that's traced, you'll just go ahead and, and cut that out. For cutting the exterior fabric, it's a little bit different. Because this is a leather bag, um, I tend not to like to fold the leather in half just because it, it leaves a crease. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to mark both halves of the wrong side of the leather and then cut out. So again, here's my main panel pattern piece. And I'm just going to shift it. We'll start on this end. Okay, again, put my scissors down for a pattern weight. I'm using the friction pen because this backing is white just so I can see it easily. Again, you'll draw around the outer edge of the pattern piece and it's a little different this time because we're going to we're going to draw through the center as well just because we need to mark both halves. And we're again, we're doing this just so we don't have to fold that fabric in half. Okay, so I've gotten that half drawn, and I'm just going to go ahead and flip the pattern piece over and draw the other half. So once that's drawn, just go ahead and cut around the outer edge. Don't cut through the center, just the outer edge. Once you've gotten all your fabric and interfacing cut out according to the cutting list, you'll need to start attaching the interfacing. So here's my lining fabric, and the lining fabric is attached to ShapeFlex interfacing, which is a fusible interfacing. So let me go ahead and show you how to attach the fabric to the interfacing. So first you want to flip to the wrong side of the fabric, and the side with the adhesive is the side of the interfacing that feels bumpy to your fingertips, so that bumpy side will go against the wrong side of the fabric. I usually like to use a pressing cloth, but for this video, just so you can see everything clearly, I'm going to skip the pressing cloth. But I have my iron set to the cotton setting, and I'm just going to hover the iron over each portion of this cutout for a few seconds. And you don't want to just clonk your iron down and let it sit for a long period of time and then move it because then you'll have imprints of the iron on your fabric when it's finished fusing. So just go ahead and keep keep the iron moving. If you want to use a bit of steam, you, you can too. And you'll know that the interfacing is properly attached when you can take your finger and try to peel back a corner. If it peels back, that means you just need to fuse it a little bit longer. Okay, now that my fabric is attached to the interfacing, you should have two main panels that look just like this, and there's a side panel cut from the lining that also needs to be attached to the shape flex. So just three pieces attached to the shape flex. For the body of the bag, I have it attached to foam interfacing, and I'm using a sew-in interfacing for this particular project. Uh, I like using by any soft and stable, but there's other brands of foam interfacing on the market. To attach the, the leather fabric to the foam, I just 
machine basted it in place around the outer edge using an eighth of an inch seam allowance. So I have this one done already, but I'm gonna go ahead and attach my remaining exterior main panel to the foam. So to do that first, I like to use Wonder Clips to clip around the outer edge, and especially for this project with the, the faux leather, Wonder Clips are great as opposed to pins because pins leave permanent markings in leather and Wonder Clips don't. So just go ahead and prepare the fabric by clipping it with the wonder clips around the outer edge and then we're just going to move this over to the sewing machine and machine baste it in place using an eighth of an inch. Because I'm sewing with leather I have the Teflon foot on my sewing machine and what the Teflon foot does is helps it glide over the leather instead of sticking to it. You can also use a walking foot. Since we're machine basting the fabric to the interfacing. I'm going to go ahead and lengthen my stitch length to four millimeters. My normal stitch length is around two and a half millimeters and length lengthening the stitch length for the basting process just makes everything go a little bit faster. Just make sure you don't forget to return the stitch length to your normal stitch length before sewing the parts of the bag together. I also like to use a, a 40 weight Aurifil thread um, 40 weight thread is just a little bit thicker than 50 weight thread so it's really good for bags and strength for seams. So we're going to go ahead and get started sewing and again we're going to sew an eighth of an inch away from the edge of the fabric. Okay, and I'm going to go ahead and change back to my normal stitch length, two and a half millimeters, just so I don't forget. You're going to repeat the same process for two exterior man main panels attached to foam, and there's one exterior side panel also attached to foam. Because we're cutting the straps and the tabs to attach the straps to the bag raw, I like to glue them to the wrong side of a scrap of the leather. So here are my tabs which are going to be attached to the strap and I've cut out two already. And I'm just going to glue glue them to the wrong side of another piece of the same leather with my fabric glue. And I like to use this Beacon 3-in-1 um, fabric tack is another good glue to use. And the glue is just going to go on the wrong side of the piece that is already cut out. And you want to make sure you don't glue all the way to the edge of the fabric. You want to glue approximately a quarter of an inch to the inside because once you press that piece to the scrap of leather you don't want the glue oozing out the side. So I'm just going to go ahead and glue all the way around. And the same thing for the other piece. And then just flip those over and glue it to the wrong side of the remaining piece of leather. So we'll just need to use this method for both of these tabs and also for the long strap piece. Again, the strap piece is going to be glued to the wrong side of another scrap of the leather. And I like to put something a little bit heavy on top of these to dry, so a ruler is fine. And I like to let them dry for about 20 to 30 minutes before I use them to sew with. After the glue is dry, you can go ahead and cut out the strap piece so that it matches the rectangle of leather that you glued it to. And the reason that we do this 
is that it's awfully hard to cut two strap pieces that are exactly the same. But if you cut one out first and then glue it onto a remaining piece of leather, it's much easier to get them to match up. So go ahead and just cut the strap piece out along the outer edges and do the same thing for both of the tabs. Okay, the first step in the pattern, we're going to be making and attaching the pocket to the lining fabric. So you'll sh you should have two pocket pieces cut from lining fabric and they will not have any interfacing on the back. I'm going to go ahead and flip those fabrics so that they're right sides together. And I'm going to use my wonder clips to pin around the outer edge. For the pocket, we're going to use a quarter inch seam allowance and we need to leave an opening on the top edge of the pocket in order to turn right side out. So if, it, if you find it helpful as a reminder just to leave a marking, you want to leave the opening approximately uh, five inches large and centered. So I just left myself a reminder when I get to the sewing machine so I know to leave that opening. And for the rest of the pocket, I'm, I'm just going to pin around the outer edge. When you get to the sewing machine, make sure you start sewing at the second line that you drew. So here's the first one, here's the second one. In bag making, I find it helpful just for any seam to backstitch at stop and start. And we're gonna use a quarter inch seam allowance. When you reach the corner, stop a quarter of an inch away from the end of the fabric. And if, if it's more helpful to you, you can mark that first, that seam allowance and pivot. You'll lift the presser foot just as I did. So I lifted the presser foot, pivot with the needle down, and then you can continue sewing. Because I want my corners to look nice and crisp, I'm going to use my scissors just to cut a diagonal right across the corner and you want to stay a little bit away from your stitching so you don't want to cut into your stitches at all. Now it's time to turn that pocket fabric right side out. When you get to the corners, I suggest using a turning tool, it can be a chopstick, something blunt just to poke out the corners. And then we'll just press that so that the pocket is flat. So when it comes to the seams, just use your fingers to roll out the seams so that they're properly wrong sides together. When you get to that top edge with the opening, you just want to press both of those fabrics toward the wrong side by a quarter inch, which was our seam allowance for sewing. I'm just going to put a wonder clip on that edge with the opening for now. We're going to move this over to the sewing machine and we're going to stitch that top edge with the opening using an eighth of an inch seam allowance. Now 
now it's time to attach the pocket to one of the lining main panels. So to do that, I'm going to use my ruler and measure down four inches from the top edge. And I want the pocket to be centered, and a quick way to center anything that's being cut from a pattern piece on the fold is just to use that pattern piece because you know that that's half, half of the fabric piece. Okay, so there's my center mark right there. I'm going to take my pocket and just finger press it in half to find the center of the pocket. And then that center is just going to go right on top of the mark that you made for the center placement. So my pocket is centered and to stitch it in place we're going to use an eighth of an inch seam allowance and we're going to sew only the sides and the bottom using an eighth of an inch. So that pocket is all attached. You should have two reinforcement pieces cut out of the leather and we're going to attach one of the reinforcement pieces to each of the lining main panel fabric pieces and this will just help reinforce the area where the magnetic snap is going to be attached to. So to attach the reinforcement piece I'm going to use again my main panel pattern piece to find the center and I'm going to measure down three quarters of an inch from the top edge. So I'm just going to go ahead and put my ruler right, right on top of the paper pattern piece and make a mark where that center is. Okay. I'm lining up the center of that reinforcement piece on that center marking and opening it out. I'm going to stitch around the outer edge of that piece of leather using an eighth of an inch seam allowance. You'll repeat that same process for the second lining main panel and the remaining piece of reinforcement. After the reinforcement is sewn to the lining fabric, it's time to attach one of the magnetic snaps, one half of the magnetic snap. To do that, I'm going to take my ruler and measure right down the center of that reinforcement piece and make a mark. Most magnetic snaps come with washers. Mine does, and so mine has a washer with a little hole in the middle. So I'm going to place that hole right on top of the mark that I made and draw the two lines for the slits. If your magnetic snap did not come with a washer, you can go ahead and just use the magnetic snap itself. Place the prongs in the center and go ahead and mark where the prongs are. Either way is fine. Because my leather is thin and my fabric is not as substantial, I'm using a scrap of the foam interfacing and I cut this scrap of foam interfacing to an inch and a half squared 
and I'm going to use that to place on the back of the fabric once the snap is inserted. So I'm going to place the washer on the piece of foam as well and mark placement for where the prongs are going to go. I'm using my seam ripper to slit small holes through the foam and you always want to start with a smaller slit. You can always make a small slit bigger but if you make the slit too big it's hard to cover that up especially on the fabric and I'm going to do the same thing on those two slit markings on the piece of reinforcement. And you just want to drag the seam ripper gently so that you don't make a huge slit. Okay, one half of this magnetic snap is going to go through the right side of the fabric. The piece of foam with the slits is going to follow that up. And then the washer is going to go on the back. And then I like to open out the prongs. I like to use, you can use um, pliers or the edge of the table to lean the prongs against. Just so you can see what I'm doing, I'm just going to go ahead and use my scissors to flatten those prongs. Okay, so this is what it looks like from the back. And here's what it looks like with the snap installed. You'll repeat the same process for the other lining piece and the other half of the magnetic snap. So the other half of the magnetic snap has a little nub that fits into the first one that you installed. Now we're going to attach one of the tabs to each end of the side panel and the side panel is attached to the foam interfacing. So to start I'm going to take my ruler and measure down three quarters of an inch away from one short end of the side panel. Okay, I'm going to take one of the metal rectangles and place it on the center of one of the tabs. And I'm going to bring each end of the tab so that they meet like that. Okay, the tab is going to go on the side panel right at the line, so where the folded edge of the tab is, that's where the line is and it's going to be centered and you can go ahead and take your ruler and just verify that it's centered. I'm going to take this over to the sewing machine. I'm going to sew an eighth of an inch away from the edge of the tab and you're going to be able to come about a half inch away from the metal rectangle so just get as close to the hardware as you can that your sewing machine presser foot will allow. Okay I'm sewing an eighth of an inch away from the tab you may wish to adjust your stitch length to slightly longer just so the stitches don't look bunched up because you're sewing a thicker piece of fabric over here. And then again, we're going to stop approximately half inch away from the hardware and sew across. Okay, so that tab is attached in place and you'll repeat the same process to attach the tab to the other short end of the side panel. Now it's time to attach the side panel to both of the main panels of the bag and I like to start with the lining first just because it's thinner and a little bit easier to go through and so a good bit of practice before you get to sewing the outer portion of the bag together. So I have one of my lining main panels and you'll need your lining side panel. To start I'm going to finger press my lining main panel in half and just make a mark where the center is just at the bottom of the bag. And I'll do the same thing for the lining main panel. I'll finger press that in half 
and find the center and you can mark both halves of the center for the side panel. What we're going to do with those marks is I'm going to take the mark from the lining side panel and align it with the mark that I had on the bottom of the lining main panel. And the reason that we do that is it e helps to evenly distribute the fabric and make everything centered so then when you go to attach the other lining main panel, things aren't wonky or uneven. Everything's even and centered. So after I pinned the bottom, I like to go ahead and just pin the top. Same thing with the other top edge. And then go ahead and fill the rest out with pins. And if when you're pinning, you end up with extra fabric on either the main, the main panel or the lining, just take a few pins out and repin it and try to evenly distribute that fabric. Anytime I'm sewing with a curved edge, before I take the fabric over to the sewing machine, I like to make little a quarter inch high clips anywhere where there's a curve and that helps the fabric evenly spread through the curve. Because the main panel has the curve and the side panel doesn't, it's just a straight piece of fabric, those clips help spread that side panel fabric apart so that you don't have puckers and everything looks nice and smooth. So anywhere where there's a curve, go ahead and make those quarter inch high clips. We're going to sew this step using a half inch seam allowance. Okay, the process for attaching the second main panel is the same as when you attach the first. The only difference is when you come to the bottom, you need to leave an opening that's at least six inches wide. And the opening is for turning the bag when we're finished right side out. So sew the second lining main panel in place using a half inch seam allowance and leave that opening at the bottom. Now we're going to attach the exterior side panel to one of the exterior main panels. And the process is the same for as what we did in the lining. But again, you're going to fold that exterior side panel in half and make a mark on both halves. 
And then the same thing for the exterior main panel. We want to find the center of the bottom of the panel. And we're going to pin the markings that we made on the side panel to the bottom half of the exterior main panel. As we did before, we're going to pin the top of the side panel and then same thing on the other end. Then we'll just be putting more pins throughout. Okay, after that's pinned, we're going to be sewing the exterior using a 3 8 of an inch seam allowance. We sewed the lining together using a half inch seam allowance, and usually I like the seam allowance on the lining to be slightly larger so that once the lining is inside the exterior, it's not as baggy. So we'll sew these pinned edges using 3 8 of an inch seam allowance. Go ahead and repeat sewing the side panel to the remaining exterior main panel. When you sewed the lining you left that opening in the bottom. For sewing the exterior you don't need to leave an opening so you'll just sew continuously and this is what it looks like when it's finished. To wrap this part up and you'll do the same thing for the lining as well. I like to trim the seams down to approximately a quarter inch and you don't have to measure it you can just eyeball it. And the reason that I like to do this is because it reduces bulk in the seam and makes the finished bag look less bulky. So just trim that seam allowance to down to a quarter inch, same thing on the other half, and do the same thing for the lining. Now it's time to sew the exterior to the lining along the top edge. So to do that, you'll turn the exterior right side out and leave the lining wrong side out. Okay, we're going to slide the exterior inside the lining and before you do that, go ahead and just push those uh, metal rectangles so they're facing down and clear of that top seam. Okay. 
After you slide that exterior inside, you want to make sure the side seams are aligned. So the side seams for the lining, you can go ahead and spread that apart with your fingers and make sure that's aligned with the respective side seam on the exterior. Go ahead and put a wonder clip in place. And same thing for the other seam on that same side of the bag. Okay, and I'm going to flip to the other side panel and do the same thing. Make sure that those side seams are aligned. Okay, after you get those side seams pinned, you can just go ahead and pin the front and the back in place. We're going to sew this pinned edge using a quarter inch seam allowance. Things are gonna get a little bit bulky when you approach the side seam, so just take your time in order to deal with that extra thickness. front of the bag has a slight curve right here you want to take your scissors and leave little an eighth of an inch high clips anywhere where there's a curve and that'll help the fabric lay more flat when you turn it right side out now it's time to turn the bag right side out through the opening in the lining so just gently pull it through the opening and I made my opening a bit too small and I can tell because it's getting really difficult to pull it through so I'm just going to go ahead and rip a few stitches in my lining so I have more wiggle room to get that bag out. Okay, that should be fine. Go ahead and place that lining inside the bag so the exterior and the lining are wrong sides together. And normally I would suggest giving the bag a press before top stitching that top edge, but because we're using leather, we don't want to use any heat on that fabric. So I'm just going to go ahead and take my wonder clips and by hand I'm going to roll the seams so that the fabrics are wrong sides together and just go ahead and put some wonder clips on that top edge in preparation for the top stitching. Ok, 
Okay, now we're going to top stitch that pinned edge using a quarter inch seam allowance. And just a quick tip before we start with the top stitching. My exterior fabric is sort of a pinkish gold and my lining fabric is black. So I like to match my top thread to match this fabric and my bobbin thread is going to be black to match that fabric. And the reason I like to do that is I don't like to have a strange color popping out in the lining. I sort of want that lining thread to sink in to the lining fabric so it's not screaming out or instantly visible. So let's go ahead and get the top stitching going. Quarter inch seam allowance. And again, those side seams are going to be really thick, so just take your time, take a deep breath, and you can get over them. Now it's time to top stitch the strap. So to do that, I'm going to make a mark on each short end of the strap that is two inches in. And same thing for the other end. So what we're going to do with these two lines is this is where we're going to start stitching and the other end where the line is, that's where we're going to stop stitching. We're just going to sew the long edge of the strap and the reason that we're not stitching all the way around the curve is we're going to have some stitching there for attaching this end of the strap through the metal rectangles and so we don't want to stitch here twice. So we're going to start stitching here. We're going to stitch an eighth of an inch away from the edge of the strap and for sewing leather straps I like to pull my thread long. Instead of back stitching, I like to tie off the ends of the strap so that you don't have visible markings or a little bird's nest on the underside of the strap from back stitching. So we're just going to tie those threads off when we're finished. I'm just pulling those threads out so I can have the long threads for tying off that end. And then we'll do the same thing to sew the other long edge of the strap.
you can just tie those ends up by hand, pull that top thread through so you can tie it off. And then we're gonna go ahead and attach the strap to the bag. Okay, so now to attach the strap through the rectangle ring that's on the side panel of the bag, we're just gonna thread it through. The metal rectangle is gonna stop where you have those two lines of stitching from top stitching the strap. And you're just gonna fold it over. And I'm just gonna put a couple wonder clips in place. We're gonna sew similar to what we did with attaching the tab to the side panel of the bag. So we're gonna sew an eighth of an inch away from the edge of the fabric, work our way around, and come across approximately half inch away from that hardware over there. That's what it looks like and you'll repeat the same process for the other end of the bag and I went ahead and did that already. The last step to finishing the bag is that we still have this opening in the lining and you can either slip stitch that closed by hand but I prefer to do it by machine just because it's faster and to do that you're just going to go ahead and fold the fabric toward the wrong side by about a quarter inch. I'm just going to put some wonder clips in place. And it doesn't have to be anything exact. Just eyeballing it is fine. And then we're just going to go ahead and stitch this down using an eighth of an inch seam allowance. Thanks so much for sewing along with me. I can't wait to see your finished bag. Check down below for a link to my private Facebook group where you can post a photo of your finished bag. And don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe for future projects. Remember, if I can do it, so can you.